Dan Ullman, Matt Bernie are taking a look at race number three at Gulfstream Park on Saturday, the first major stakes race on a card where there is just a smorgasbord of stakes. And if you want to bet them all, please bet them with DRF Bets, who sponsors our stakes previews. $200 free bet, no deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join. Use the promo code FREEBET09. Let's take a look at the field for the La Prevoyante. We're going a mile and a half on the turf for fillies and mares, and we see Shug McGahee's got the morning line favorite. That's the number seven, Apple Betty, who looked good winning the grade three dowager last time out at this distance at Keeneland, although she did have a really nice ground-saving trip. I was going to say, and it ended up being a little bit of a sweater if you backed her at the top of the lane. You weren't sure if Johnny was going to be able to find a seam. He's able to shoot up the wood, and she just absolutely buried the field from there. Uh, I firmly believe if she runs that race, she's not losing here. We'll find out if a little bit of a layoff is the thing that comes up and nips her. There's not a ton of speed, but I have to be honest, I think that works to her advantage. She has that beautiful tactical ability. She can go. She can sit just off. Other than the price, I don't think there's really a lot to knock about. What I liked best about the Dowager was she did show the ability to rate off of other horses and still come with a strong finish because I think that leave was at least a little bit of sure. a question mark for her. And as we see by the time form U.S. pace projector, Apple Betty unlikely to get the lead in this spot. Daring Duchess, the four, who was a wire-to-wire -wire winner last time out, is yeah. third here. And the great thing about the pace projector is we can handicap it. Now, Tarolina, the six, is a fast horse. I think Daring Duchess is making the lead. I'd be stunned if Daring Duchess isn't on the lead. That's what her game is. Her best game is speed. I wonder if at this point in her career if she needs the lead because we've seen in the past that she just doesn't seem to have that same sort of fire when she's sitting off of a target. I think, look, you just saw her win that race here at, at Gulfstream going a mile and three sixteenths on the chooch. Why all of a sudden would you take her off of it? And she beat three of these common foes in gate-to-wire fashion in that Via Borghese stakes. It was a much improved performance off of a pair of duds and maybe she just needed a little bit of time off for Michael Maker. Uh, Daring Duchess, I agree with you, uh, can get to the lead. She did get an easy lead, I thought, in the Via yep. Borghese. And Tarolina, I don't think, is going to let Daring Duchess get away with anything foolishly slow. I would tend to agree with that. There is a part of me, though, that wonders as far as Terralina is concerned. I know both of her lifetime wins Gates of Wire fashion. I mean, do you think... I, I'm a, I guess I'm a little bit dubious of her chances of winning if she goes and presses the pace. I wonder if you just turn it into a staying fest. Does she have a better opportunity? But the problem is, if you let Daring Duchess go, I mean, that, that's a very dangerous proposition. A couple of formulator facts to address. One good, one not so good. The good one belongs to Maker, the four Daring Duchess, 40%, three and a half ROI over the past five years, with last out winners going long on the turf, making the second start at the layoff in graded stakes races. Daring Duchess, I would expect to be sharp. We'll see if she's good enough to take down Apple Betty, who's better than the horses she was up against in the Via Borghese. As for Tarolina, she is trained by a great one in Christophe Clement, who does not have good numbers. Third off the layoff in graded stake turf routes. Bit surprising, 0 for 23, but considering that Tarolina is going to be a price, I think you're supposed to just take Clement's overall body of work. I was going to say, take that with a grain of salt, considering she's going to be double-digit odds. My concern problem with her, not only the sort of pace situation, I just don't think she's good enough. Oh, somersault. Well... Somersault's a horse that just happens to get bad trips, it seems, time after time after time. If you are a Somersault fan, you have to remember fondly the good things she did at Gulfstream Park last year, where they stretched her out and she reeled off three consecutive wins, including the grade three orchid at a mile and three-eighths. Then she was buried in traffic in the New York. She had to alter course off heels in the Wea. She got shuffled back in the early stages of the Glens Falls. Last time out in the Long Island, it looked like she was going to a nice two-path prompting trip, and Paco Lopez just kind of jammed her in behind uh, the, the, the leader. They like to save ground with her, and it never works out. And from post two, I think they're going to try it out again. You know what the other problem I have with her is knowing that she is prone to, let's say, troubled trips. I'm fine with that if you're going to be what she was at Gulfstream last year. She was no less than six to one in any one of those three victories. She, she might be the second choice in here, or close to it, right behind Daring Duchess. To me, that's an unappetizing number. She can win on her best day. Uh, of and, course. And she really likes yeah. Gulfstream Park. So keep an eye on the tote there. I think you have to basically say this is the price she deserves to yes. be. And if she's an overlay, go Better. to work. If yeah. not, maybe a tough Sit trip back, is coming. Yeah. Some horses seem to find those trips. The five is texting for Chad Brown. And texting is just a maddening example of a horse that doesn't want to break from the gate. She always takes a hop and it costs her about two lengths. And when you're against horses of equal ability, you can't spot them two lengths, especially when then you have to weave your way through traffic as she did in her most recent start, that via Borghese Stakes, where she was pace compromised. Boy, I just wish she broke sharper. I'm not sure I trust her completely. It's, it's one thing if you are just that much superior 
I have to be honest, I don't think she's particularly good, and I don't mean that in a negative light. I think even in this field, she's up against it, and I think, you know, look, Chad, Chad has turned many mediocre-ish horses into, you know, stakes winners. I, I just, this is the kind of horse that I, I would fade every day. Bowley was coming off a little bit of a layoff in the Via Borghese. There was not a lot of pace on display, and she had to swing all the way to the five or six path, turning into the stretch. And she flattened out a little bit late. I won't hold the flattening out against her. I do wonder if this extra distance, though, is what she wants. I wonder if she's more of a late kick and middle distance horse. Sometimes when they close in middle distance, it doesn't mean they're going to close going longer. 100%. I, I think she's a closing sort of eight and a half, nine for a long horse. Of course, down towards the rail, Miss Nancy is going to be probably the longest shot in the field. And while she's a very nice horse, uh, I think that she's at least interesting from a pedigree standpoint. The arches do seem to yeah. want long distances but it's still a tough, tough ask from a class standpoint. I'm going to be most interested to see where she's positioned on the racetrack because now you stretch out to this mile and a half distance from a mile race. I know she was coming from off of it there, but I wonder, do you just kind of add a little bit of a wrinkle? You've got a, a master of pace with Julian Laparu aboard. Maybe you send her out of there and try to get aggressive. Top picks for the grade three, La Prevoyante for chalking out with Apple Betty, and she got a good trip last time. I usually don't like to play these horses at short prices, but I just think she's found the right field. Darren Duchess is nice. Texting and Somersault are nice, but I think Apple Betty is a legitimate grade two, grade three type. The others might be more listed. I, I tend to agree with you about not wanting to play horses off of perfect trips, but the exception for me is when the perfect trip wouldn't make a difference. She was 100 the best in there. If it's the perfect trip and you prevail by a half length, sure, I, I'm going to try to fade you. When you win the way that she did at Keeneland, that, that's all I need. We both are cold punching, I guess, 7-4. Seven, four. Seven, You're four. going 7-4-2-5. I'm going 7-4-6-3 in the $200,000 La Prevoyante. Race 3 at Gulfstream Park. Has an approximate post of 12.30. If you're betting from home, DRF bets, pretty good deal. $200 free bet, no deposit required. When you go to drf.com forward slash join, use the promo code freebet09. Lots of graded stakes action at Gulfstream. Best of luck.